Hello and welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Shard Diffractor, Engineer's third secondary weapon, and we're going to be going over the overclocks for it, some builds that I use with it, and some potential loadouts for it. So just like my minigun video, this isn't going to be a super in-depth guide for each of the overclocks. It's going to be a general overview of what they do, what they kind of pair well with, and kind of what to think about when building them, at least in my opinion. So first up, we have our clean overclock for the Shard Diffractor. The Shard Diffractor only has one of these. This is efficiency tweaks. This gets you a larger mag size and also more ammo overall. This one is really, really good. It's a really good overclock for the Shard Diffractor. Generally, these two things are some of the best two things that you can have in the game. And you can build it however you'd like. This is the way that I build the Shard Diffractor usually. So I'm going with extra ammo in tier one, extra weak spot damage in tier two, faster charge up in tier three, fire in tier four, and then the biomass converter in tier five. But again, you can switch this up however you'd like. It works really well with anything. If you wanted to go with more damage, you can. If you want to go with more AOE, you can. This is a general purpose build that's just very ammo efficient. So you can kind of take it with whatever. I decided to pair it with another clean overclock. I took it with a racer on the Loki Smart Rifle. This one just gives you more ammo as well. So you actually have a lot of bolts for Engineer, which is kind of unusual for NG. Usually you don't have the most amount of bullets overall. This gives you all the advantage that the Shard Diffractor has already. So you have really long range, you have fire, you actually have extra fire with this particular build. You got decent single target damage, you got good AOE damage, and you can also use this at pretty close range. The way I use the Shard Diffractor is very similar to the way I use the minigun, and that's usually the way that I think about it. So just kind of use it for anything that's at long range that you need to kill or medium range that you need to kill. Maybe not so much for close range. The Loki with a racer also works really well at medium to long range. If you wanted more close range options, you could also go with something with a shotgun or something with stubby. Our next overclock is Volatile Impact Reactor. This one makes it so you can put down floor fires or the equivalent of floor fires like the flamethrower has. So your laser will leave behind magma trails. Anything walking across the magma trail has a heat build up on them and then it will catch them on fire, assuming they can be caught on fire. This lets you do a decent amount of damage over time. The trade-offs for it aren't that bad. It has a smaller capacity, so you do have a pretty small magazine with this one, and it also decreases the effective radius of the beam in general. The way that I like building it is like this, going with extra ammo, going with larger AoE, more charge up, more fire, and then slowdowns. You could switch this around for plenty of other options though, this one is very flexible. You could take extra mag size in tier 3, that wouldn't be a bad option going back up to the 50 rounds, and then you basically just get magma trails for free on the weapon, assuming you build the rest like this. It's great for crowd control, it's great for just building up heat, it's great for just applying heat and keeping heat on enemies too. So if you're trying to light something on fire like one of the robots, or if you're just trying to light bigger enemies on fire like Praetorians or Oppressors, this one can certainly help. It also pairs really well with just about any of the secondary weapons too. For this I decided to pair it with the Warthog Auto Shotgun, running it with Cycle Overload, full rate of fire, just full damage at very close range, and I was just using the shotgun at close range. Doesn't really work that well outside of close range, medium range you can kind of get away with. Shard Diffractor I was going to use from anything from medium range and longer. Also since this build is so good at crowd control, I didn't really need that with my shotgun, so building it for full damage up close, just for taking out big things like Praetorians and Oppressors, works just fine. But of course you could go for something with longer range, you could also just go with like full rate of fire shotgun, full rate of fire stubby, Explosive Chemical Rounds, Loki, something like that, they would all be really strong too. The third overclock I was using was Overdrive Booster, the Unstable Overclock. Overdrive Booster doesn't actually change the weapon whatsoever unless you choose to use it. So the way to use this is to be firing and then hit your reload button, whatever that might be on console or on PC, and then you'll start firing out a supercharged laser dealing two and a half times damage, but consuming twice as much ammo at least as quickly, and you are locked into the animation of firing this as well as you cannot move while firing this. So it's really good against single large targets. And that was basically all I built this one for. Primary weapon I took with it was the Loki with Executioner, which I wouldn't really recommend with this normally because I built both all for damage, but we were going on a industrial sabotage, which full damage is really good on those. On regular missions, not as much. Um, you'll probably run through bolts with this really quick if you want to run this combo. Anyway, this is the way that I build the Shard Diffractor with Overcharger. I just built it all for damage. Extra damage in Tier 1, extra weak spot damage in Tier 2, faster charge up, armor breaking in Tier 4, and then slow down in Tier 5. You could even go with more damage if you want to go with Hydrogen Rupturing in Tier 5 and take this with like Stubby or take it with Electro Generator uh, Loki. That could also work. There's two major upsides to this overclock. Like I said, you don't actually have to activate this, so if you choose not to use it at any point, it's still just the regular Shard Diffractor, so you can build it however you'd like. It's actually extremely flexible for an Unstable, unlike a lot of Unstable Overclocks. The other major advantage is the massive amount of damage that you get to do to single targets. So as long as a target is not focusing you and not coming right at you, there's going to be plenty of time for you to fire this and empty out the entire magazine since it consumes twice as much ammo as normal. 
even though it does even more damage than double the damage, you really don't lock yourself in place too long. Also, once you fully uh, empty out the gun, it does take twice as long to recharge the gun as normal. That is the other uh, kind of downside with this one, but that usually isn't a big deal if you're just using this for big targets. And that's the only time I would say to turn on the overdrive booster. Up next, we have automated beam controller. This one's an interesting one. This is a balanced overclock that makes it so once you start firing the gun, you cannot stop firing it unless you pickaxe cancel it. This does increase our total amount of DPS that we can do though, because it makes it so you can fire at the charge factor even faster. It does also cut down on our magazine size as well with the weapon, so we don't hold as many shots with this. And here's the way that I built this, although you could build it with the larger magazine in tier three as well. That would also be really good. Biomass converter is really good with this in tier five because you can potentially just keep getting your ammo refunded with it. So as so long as you just use this against crowds, it can clear up crowds really, really fast. You will have to get kind of used to just firing out the entire gun all at once though. It does give you extra ammo though too, which is really nice. So you can actually use this pretty frequently. I would say use this against either one large enemy that you really want to use the entire magazine on or use it into a crowd of enemies. Both those ways I find better than trying to use it to pick off random enemies at a distance. For this with a primary weapon, I took Stubby and I took it with Refire Booster. This is just a great overclock that works really well against everything. It doesn't work incredibly great at long range, but this build I decided to use more for close and medium range. Up next we have Feedback Loop, and Feedback Loop makes it so every time that you're just firing the beam out on an enemy, it gets larger and larger and larger. This is at the cost of our ammo, which is okay. I'm taking extra ammo in tier one so that we can kind of negate that. This is the same exact build that I was running previously with Feedback Loop, and it works really well with this one too. You could, of course, switch it around. I would recommend the Biomass Converter in tier five though for a similar reason to Feedback Loop because it will just keep growing and growing the bigger the horde is so that you can just keep using this on them and keep getting your ammo refunded back to you. That's really good. Aside from that, I'm basically just gonna be using this to pick off things at a distance like the regular Shard Defractor, and I'm gonna be using this heavily against hordes. It's really good against horde enemies. It's not as useful against large enemies, but you can use it for that. For a primary weapon, I am taking this with the Seeker rounds for the Loki. This will make it a little bit easier to make up for my lack of single target damage. The Loki with Seeker rounds is really good at hitting anything big because you don't really have to worry about it. You're always going to do guaranteed damage to the enemy, whether that be a Praetorian or a Oppressor. Dreadnought too in most cases, with the exception of like the second phase of the Hive Guard but everything else you will do consistent damage towards, and it has really long range as well. This build does kind of struggle at close range, at least against spread out enemies. If they're kind of close and not all clumped together, that can be a little bit rough for you. And then for our final overclock, Plascrete Catalyst, I'm running it like this. Plascrete Catalyst is a really weird and interesting and very fun overclock. This lets you fire your lasers at your platforms, and once you hold the laser on that platform for so long, it will then charge up and explode the platform, dealing high damage to everything around it. It also does a lot of friendly fire damage, so be aware of that. Try not to blow yourself up or try not to blow teammates up with it. It also destroys the ground, so you can technically mine with this, but it's not really that great at mining. This does lower your overall ammo count for it, and it also increases your recharge delay whenever you do use this. You can actually kind of cheat this out a little bit, because when you do fire this at a platform and explode it, it will turn off your uh, shard diffractor. However, you can pickaxe cancel and immediately fire at it again, which is super useful and you can kind of get over one of the downsides of this. It does really, really good against crowds and it does really good against single targets too, if you can place your platforms where they need to go. You might also want to take extra platforms with your platform gun just so that you can use this more often. And again, it works really well against single targets too, so long as they're not super agile. If they're really fast moving, it can be a little bit more difficult and it does take prep time to set this up. So this is probably one of the more difficult overclocks to use for the Shard Defractor and just for engineers secondaries in general it can be a little bit tricky. For a <laughs> primary weapon, I also picked a tricky overclock, which is Turret Arc. And you may not want to go with this because this is situationally really, really strong, but it can also be a little bit strange. I also forgot to take two turrets for this mission, as you can see in the background, so I'm only running one turret with this, which made Turret Arc not nearly as useful as it would be. Generally, you would want to take two of these, set them up so you can arc them across, slow enemies down, and then use your Shard Defractor on your platforms. This way you're kind of using your whole kit and you should be running out of ammo with basically everything at the same time. You can, of course, just use Stubby as a regular submachine gun to run around with. That's what I would recommend doing if there's not big crowds of enemies. So these are all the Shard Defractor overclocks, the way I build them, and also a potential loadout for them. Hopefully this kind of helped you out, give you some ideas. Thanks everybody for watching this. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.